What is going on YouTube? Greetings from beautiful Cartagena, Colombia. I'm excited to get out and explore Cartagena. I've been here many times. You're currently looking at the newer part of the city, but it has an old city that is just gorgeous and beautiful. It's a little balmy and humid today. It's like 85 degrees right now. It's gonna be 90 a little bit later and it's like 100% humidity. So I figured I'd come up here while it's still a little cool out, film this video and then head out into town and get all sweaty and explore the beautiful old city. So this video is about what I love about cruising from a full-time traveler's perspective. If this is your first time joining me, I've been traveling full-time since 2019. Every year I travel a different way. My first year of travel, I lived in a different country every 30 days, including the country of Colombia. Then the pandemic hit, I bought an RV van, a Winnebago Travado, and I traveled all over the United States in my Winnebago. After that, I bought a plane ticket to Thailand. I bought a motorbike and I just motorbiked all over Thailand for a year. And this year, I've lived on nothing but cruise ships. I got about 59 days left of this year of cruise ship travel. And next year, I plan to travel all kinds of ways, integrating the different ways I've traveled into the year. And I'll be using cruising as a way to change geographic locations, but we'll talk more about that later. So before I jump into what I love about cruising, let's talk about a couple of the negative perceptions associated with cruising that are kind of true, but also a little bit overblown. So one of them is that cruising is nothing but old people. And while that's true in a sense, it really depends on what cruise line you're on. If you're on a cruise line like MSC, that's really affordable. You'll see a lot of families on those and it's a much younger demographic. You go to Carnival, it's a party demographic because they do mostly short cruises. And so it's more of a booze cruise. So you'll have a bunch of younger adults on there partying and living it up. And then with Royal Caribbean, their ships and private island are like amusement parks. So there'll be a lot of families, a lot of kids on there. And then the cruise line I'm on right now, and one of my favorites is Princess. And they just have an older demographic, which I don't mind. Like I always say, I don't mind kids, I just don't like them on my cruises. So I prefer to be on the cruise lines with the older demographic. All right, the next negative I hear all the time is that cruising is really superficial and you can't really learn about cultures or get really deep into the places that you visit. And that is true. You're only there like six to 10 hours. It's really hard to do a bunch of deep cultural travel when you're only there for a few hours. But if you take the right excursions or go explore the right areas, you can get a culturally immersive experience, but it's kind of on you, but it's not gonna be like going to the countries like I used to and living there for 30 days. You're not gonna get immersed like that. But what I will say is the part of cruising that's not superficial is the way you're actually traveling, which is on the ship, at sea, slowly. That's very immersive. And being on a cruise ship and sailing around the world on the ocean is like no other form of travel. And it's, it's a very deep experience if you're really into that. I've seen sunsets and sunrises all over the world, in the mountains, on beaches, in the desert, but nothing compares to being completely surrounded by water and seeing a sunrise or a sunset at sea. And so there is some deep travel involved in cruise ship travel. You just have to know how to enjoy it. Okay, let's jump into what I love about cruising from, like I said, a full-time traveler's perspective. So the first thing I love is you pay one price and everything is included. Your lodging, your meals, your entertainment, there's state-of-the-art gym, there's all kinds of free things to do on board. Yes, there are things that you can pay to do, but you can have a fulfilling, all-inclusive experience without spending a dime more than your cruise costs. The next thing I love about cruising is you wake up somewhere new every single day. This morning, I woke up and I am in Cartagena, Colombia. Tomorrow, I'll wake up and we'll be transiting the locks and the Panama Canal. Then the day after that, I'll wake up in, I believe, Costa Rica. And then the day after that, in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And then the day after that, um, Los Angeles, California. So every day I wake up, it's somewhere new. I don't really like planning. And to be honest with you, I usually don't even know where we're pulling into until I wake up that morning and look at the schedule. 
it's an awesome way to travel in my opinion. And I love that about cruising that every day you wake up somewhere new, whether it's a new city or out in the middle of the Caribbean ocean, you're always going to wake up to a new environment. That brings me to the next thing I love about cruising is I hate planning. And I know it sounds weird that cruising is not a planned thing because there's a schedule of events every day. But for me, myself personally, I get to choose what I do and what I don't do every single day. I love not having a plan, but having tons of options of things to do. I may wake up one day and decide, you know what? I wanna get dressed up and go eat a fancy meal in the main dining room. The next day I may wake up and say, you know what? I just wanna eat in the buffet. I may feel like going to a Broadway type show one night. I can go do that. There's live music at all times of the day on a cruise ship. Whenever I decide I wanna go listen to some live music, I just look at the schedule, figure out where the live music is and go there. If I feel like going and having a drink and dancing, I can go do that. But five minutes later, I can be in my cabin, taking a shower and jumping in the bed. There's so many things that I can do on a cruise ship without having to plan. And that's what I love because I hate planning stuff. Hey, just a really quick break. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you're enjoying this video, 70% of you haven't according to my YouTube analytics, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're enjoying this video, hit that thumbs up button. All right, back to the video. The next thing I love about cruising is it is a worry-free life. I don't have to do anything. When I wake up in the morning, I get up and I go and do my 15 to 20,000 steps in the morning. By the time I get back, my bed is made, my room is clean, I don't have to clean, I don't have to cook. I just go to the buffet, go to the main dining room, go to one of the restaurants on board and get whatever food I want. Any time of the day, I can go down to the International Cafe on here, get fufu coffees, get all the pastries I want. I can get healthy options. I can get not so healthy options. Whatever I want, I can get on a cruise ship. I don't have to worry about anything and I don't have to do anything. No cleaning, none of that stuff. I love it. The next thing I love about cruising is it's a great way to get healthy. I know what you're thinking, Kevin, you can't get healthy on a cruise ship. There's all that food available 24 seven. You actually can get healthy. It actually makes getting healthy really easy. I don't know if you noticed, but I've actually lost 25 pounds so far on this cruise. My goal is 35 pounds in 103 days. I've only been on here like 50 days and I've already lost 25 pounds. How did I do that? A couple things. I get up every morning and I walk, so I get a bunch of steps in and I've chosen healthy op options at the buffet in the main dining room. That's a great thing about cruising is not only do you have all the food that's bad for you, you have all the food that's good for you available at your fingertips too. Every day I go to the buffet, they have grilled salmon, grilled chicken, all the vegetables I want, as, as much salad as I want, all of the navy beans and all the healthy bean options, all the healthy nut options, all the healthy fruit options. There's just healthy food at my fingertips constantly so it's really easy to eat healthy when you're on a cruise ship so if you're doing that combination of eating healthy and getting in your steps skipping the elevators taking the stairs it's a really easy and quick way to get healthy and i love that about cruising probably one of my favorite things about cruising is all the interesting people you meet when you go to the solo meetup so you go to the main dining room and ask to be seated with people who want to be seated with others you meet people from all walks of life that's the thing about cruising. It is It attracts all kinds of demographics from different socioeconomic backgrounds, the different career backgrounds, different ethnic backgrounds. Like cruising does not discriminate and the people who love cruising, there's, you know, they don't discriminate against cruising. So you meet all these really, really interesting and fascinating people with amazing stories. And I just love meeting people on the cruise. You never know what you're gonna get. We talked about how cruising attracts an older demographic sometimes, and those people have amazing life stories. So uh, that part of cruising to me is just one of the best parts of it. Another thing I love about cruising is it's a great way to avoid long flights. There are all of these repositioning cruises, sometimes called transatlantic or transpacific cruises, where basically cruise lines are going where the customers are and avoiding the weather. So every year around September and October timeframe, August, September, October, 
ships on the west coast of the United States head over to Australia and Asia, and you can jump on one of those ships and you'll avoid that long 15 to 20 hour flight. The other side of the world, you can leave from the East Coast and head over to Europe around April, May, June timeframe, about when hurricane season starts. So you can take a transatlantic cruise over there and both sides of the world, Asia, Australia, and Europe, they have cruises that come back the other way six months later. So you, if you're traveling full time from a full time traveler's perspective, I can go over to Asia and then six months later, after touring around Asia, I can take a cruise back to the United States. And same thing, I can cruise from the United States over to Europe, hang out in Europe for six months and then take a cruise back. So I think that is a pretty awesome way to avoid jet lag and avoid long flights. And usually the cruises are cheaper than a business class ticket would cost you anyway, sometimes even cheaper than a normal ticket would cost you. So it's a great way to travel, in my opinion, to get from one side of the world to the other. They also have cruises that go through the Suez Canal from Europe into the Middle East and then over to Asia eventually. So there's a, there's other type of repositioning cruises uh, in the world as well. Okay, so those are the things I love about cruising from a full-time traveler's perspective. If you have any that I didn't mention, and it doesn't have to be from a full-time traveler's perspective, but anything you love about cruising that I didn't mention, make sure you type it below in the comment section and share it with everybody else watching this video. And if you enjoyed this video and you're not yet subscribed, 70% of you are not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can catch all my videos. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See you next video.